one of the uh, the fun things you have to um, get used to working on film sets is eye line and cheating it. Because if you think you're always going to be staring deep into the penetrating eyes of the other actor and your close up who you're professing your undying love to, forget about it. Chances are you're going to be looking at a green X on a map box or a tennis ball on a stick or they'll get the gaffer to turn around, you'll be looking at the back of his head. It, it could be a myriad of things. Like for, for instance, right now I'm talking to you down the, down the barrel, right, Jimmy? But actually, my, the real eye line, if I want to talk to Jimmy, is here. Now I can see him and I can talk to him and this feels completely natural to me, but it doesn't matter what feels natural to me. It matters what looks natural to camera. So I've been, I'll cheat my eye line through this entire interview so that um, you believe me. And that's the trick of being the actor, is always try and be believed. Part of prep work, everybody has a different way of doing it. Everybody has a different level of, of uh, where they go and how they um, go about unpicking the characters. Um, um, for me, I, uh, um, I love to find out the first time I'll read the script. And as far as I'm, cons I, I, as far as I'm concerned, um, the script is king. Script is the Bible. Everything comes from the script. Um, how you feel about what your character is doing, so relevant. Script is king. Um, so I will, I will go through the script for the first time just for story. The second time I'll start looking at the character. Third time I'll start looking back. Where is the, how does the character differ to how I'd operate? So if a character is a ballsy creature and she's out there and she's like, you're messing with me, I'm gonna chop your head off. I go, hmm, I probably wouldn't have taken that approach. I probably would have gone, oh, avoid confrontation. Um, and, and, you know, just try and work out where the chasms between the character and you lie so that you can find how far you have to go and how free you have to become uh, in order to embody the person um, authentically. Uh, because if you, if you, for me, if I don't do that, then I will naturally go into Protestant dorky girl and I'm like, oh, right now you've really got to be abseiling down a rock face um, with plastic gherkin knives in your back into a fire pit, doom looking for Dracula. So dorky girl ain't going to cut it right now. So you're just trying to find those, um, those chasms and, and mentally bridge them before you're faced with them in reality. I've played quite a few um, evil types um, recently, and um, I love them. I always, I think that one of the most important thing um, to do when you're, you're playing somebody who does all the wrong things is you have to love them. You have to completely understand why. But this is why I had to leave your baby in the forest to die. You have to work out why that was the only option. And it's ridiculous that you're considering it unusual. Because for you, in your, in your heart, you have to um, a thousand percent love who you're playing. Yeah, even if you're playing somebody drippy or weedy or the opposite of what you would do, you've got to work out why they're drippy or weedy. Sometimes you lead with vulnerability. Sometimes you're leading with strength. I think your physicality is very, very important for you as a human being in your life. Um, and uh, the business, there's a couple of things. In the business, you can get a call, particularly in America, you can get a call on a Wednesday and be on a plane on a Friday. But maybe your regular day is, I'm going to go to the gym, I'll have a sauna, I'll read an important book, I'll talk to my mother. Whatever your days are, you've then got to go into a 17 to 20 hour day. For an awful lot of people, and I've worked with people who, roll into set, roll into makeup, roll, and then the minute they, they go on set, they're like, bing, and they're able to do that. I, it just doesn't work for me. Um, I th so I think staying um, physically strong or you know, capable is very important. Um, there's no one physical shape anybody's got to be, you know, if you want to be, but if you want to be the superhero, you better look like one. If you want to be the vulnerable ingenue, you, you better look like one. Um, but also we all have our own physical shape. You, there's only so much you can do. Um, uh, so, and the, the roles that I've played have been super physical and I love it. And I always take a great pride when at the end of the show, the stunt team give you a stunt t-shirt and say, you're one of us. And I'm like, yes.
even, you know, if you're doing a BBC drama and you've got to get out of the car and you've got to chase the bad guy, or you've got, you've got a scene where um, you're burning the eggs down the stairs and you hear your twins upstairs um, are screeching, you've got to run up and down that stairs. Now, you're not doing it once, you're doing it 10 times, you're doing 40 times because, oh, a plane went overhead or you hit your mic or there's a thousand reasons why you have to do it again. Sometimes the tone is absolutely in the script. Sometimes it's found through the director or the showrunner. Um, sometimes it's just by being in a scene with other actors that you adjust on the day. Um, a show that was tonally really interesting was actually Once Upon a Time because it's cartoon, but there'd be an awful lot of kind of, you had to, you had to ground it. Comedy, you have to ground. And um, one director that I worked with, the first one I worked with on... Um, once upon a time, he'd say, give me a one, now give me a two. Now give me a one was give me the characters, because they're all fairy tale characters, give me the scene as a very over the top, comedic, cartoon, fairy tale, um, wah, ah, ah, type of thing. And then two would be to play it as if you're in a cop drama. And so you'd, you'd nail the reality. And then, so he would be able to balance in his edit where he wanted it tonally to be. Um, the showrunners once upon a time said to me that because, um, because tonally I, I hit Cruella with more comedy, um, they, they, gave, they wrote specifically more comedic lines for me, more outrageously funny stuff because um, that was the, the, the Irish ridiculousness in my head grabbed that, like I'm constantly grabbing the, the craziness of it. Um, so you can uh, adjust your own character within tone. Now, who's going to tell me what in the hell I'm doing in this ghastly place? I think one of the most important things I've learned is it's not life or death. It's really not. Relax, uh, breathe. Uh, it sounds so trite to say, but a lot of the time it's like anything. I want you to think about it like um, the drunk or the baby in the car crash, right? If Think of the scene as your car crash. If you're the drunk or the baby, you're surviving the scene. If you're, Ooh, I'm going to survive, you know what's going to happen? You're gone. So the more relaxed and in the character's skin that you are, the less the less you give a shit, and I mean this sincerely, do your work beforehand, stress out beforehand, freak out beforehand, tell yourself you're rubbish, that you're never going to survive it. Do all that crazy thinking that we all get before you get on set. The minute you're on set, dump it, because everybody's in the same boat, you're all pedaling to the same destination, and really it doesn't matter if you screw up. Um, what matters is if you get up tight and tense, and then what you lose instantly is truth. What you lose instantly is a person you're trying to convey. It's, it's, like, it's like playing tennis. The harder you try and hit that ball, the wilder the ball goes. Um, but if you relax into the technique, kaboom, off it flies. So that to me is very important. If you are, sometimes you're doing a very emotional scene and you get very tough. Um, and you may have had to go from naught to 60 in terms of, hey, I'm fine, tootle, 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 and collapse. You may have had to have done that 12 times and it's draining and your body, this is another hippie moment for me, your body doesn't know that hasn't happened. Your, your, your brain knows that you're acting, but your body doesn't know um, that you haven't been in that trauma from seven o'clock in the morning until six o'clock in the evening. So it's okay to step away and take a breath and just <sighs> reboot at the end of the scene when it's in the can. Then you step away and say the next scene is, hey, we're all going to Thunderland. Well, then you better go and take 10 minutes just to reboot because you've, you've, you've run a, an emotional marathon. So that's fine and that's all professional. Um, but it, and it's finding, um, it's finding what you can do on a set that's um, very important. And I highly recommend um, 
that you do it out of kindness and you do it out of professionalism. And then you'll be given an awful lot more support and leeway than if you're a pushy, shabby pain. Um, that's, that's because everybody wants, and also you get hired again. Because people want to work with a, 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 someone who's going to collaborate. They want to work with a teammate. They want to work with somebody that's pleasant to have around. Whatever's going on in your head, that's your problem. Take it home to your hotel or your bedroom or whatever and self-flagellate, whatever you got to do, or, you know, watch, you know, reruns of Grey's Anatomy, whatever works for you, um, do that, but have it on your time, not on um, the time on a set because it's big money happening, ticking away there. When it comes to intimate scenes, you've got to kind of have worked out in your head, I think anyway, what your, where your boundaries are, what's necessary for the scene, what's necessary for the story and where your boundaries are. Um, uh, there weren't intimacy coaches in my day, um, but I've, I've, I haven't come across one and I, I applaud it. I think whatever makes it easier, whatever makes it safer, um, the better. Um, usually everybody on set is kind of embarrassed and awkward. Um, and there's nothing you can do about that, except what I found um, when I've had to do nudity or, um, or sex scenes, um, I tend to, and it's kind of part of my bravado probably, but I don't want, um, and uh, it works for me, I don't want to be feeling shy or awkward. Um, I don't want someone racing up to me with a, um, a, a dressing gown in with those three seconds in between takes um, as if it's something to hide or be scared of. Um, so what I tend to do is I'll get on a set, um, I'll check, I'll make sure that, you know, people haven't got visitors that day. Um, and if they are, you just very politely say, hey, to the first assistant director, hey, you see those 12 lads around the motor, I've never seen them before, what's going on? And he'll go, oh, holy God, yeah, you're right. Oh, the producer brought blah, blah, blah. And then they're gone. Because um, you don't mind your crew. You've known your crew for two weeks, three months, whatever it is. And it's all like, they've seen you cry and snot and do all sorts. And they're your family. So I never worry about crew. Um, it's just, you know, the people who have suddenly turned up that day is always weird. Um, but what I tend to do is I'll turn up on set and uh, you're probably wearing the smallest pair of like string thing and that's it if you're lucky. Um, that's always a depressing moment when you get to your, your dressing room and you realize that that is your costume for today. <laughs> okay. oh. um, but I tend to just go, okay, you know, we're ready, drop everything, go, and I will stand there in star shape and I will spin and I'll go, here you go, everybody, this is all I got. This is what God gave me. You're going to be looking at it all day. Have good luck. There we go. And then I do that partly to make them feel more comfortable, weirdly, but most importantly to make me feel comfortable because I've taken charge of it. Because the reality is, they're going to see. Um, and why make it sneaky and weird? And also within a minute and a half, no one cares. No one cares. So, um, so it's just... Part of, the, part of the job sometimes. So that's how I control how I feel about me. If you see what I mean, because you're trying to, in, in any scene that you're doing, you're trying to knock out that self-consciousness. Um, and you're never more self-conscious than when you're in the, the net. And the best application of yours will be in capturing Jonathan's five senses. I did a, a quite intimate uh, scene with Katie McGrath in Dracula and I had, you know, ended up having to kiss her and all that stuff. And the director came and said, do you really know what to, um, what, what to do with this scene? And I, and I just said, because I'd worked it out beforehand, what I was comfy with, I said, well, if you're comfy, set your camera or we'll just go for it. And I said, Katie, are you comfortable that, because I had all the dialogue, I was running the entire scene. I said, are you comfortable that I run the scene? She said, yeah. As a woman, I prefer to know going in how I see it. 
So it's about knowing what you're comfortable with, being in control of it, not feeling like a victim because you're not. It's just part of your job. Um, and uh, being collaborative rather than just a puppet on a string. I once worked on, uh, with one director who was a very technical director and he, um, and he came to me in the, in the ADR session actually, many months later, and he just went, thank you. And, I, and um, he said, thank you. He said, I had no idea what you were doing. I said, I know, you ignored all of us all day long. He goes, I did. I'm like, I know, you had a crane and you had lights and you had fun gizmos. And he goes, I feel really bad. I'm like, it's okay, we got this. Um, I said, but just don't do it to anybody else. And he was like, I won't. Because it's one of those things where I think directors have to answer every single question for every single department on set. So it gets extremely challenging. Um, but sometimes if, if a director, a bit like if you're a mom or your dad or your best friend is being difficult or necessarily so, and you know they are, all you have to do is go, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting um, some aggro from you. Have I, have I specifically upset you? And they go, oh God, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was thinking about the fact that the honey wagon just exploded and um, sorry. And it just, and we all need that. We all need to be reminded sometimes. So a lot of the time, if you don't understand what the director has asked you to do, um, ask. Um, sometimes I've worked with directors who have given you the most obscure note and I'll go, no, no, hang on a second. I don't understand what you're saying. I can't practically use that. Do you want this or this? And as ridiculous as that sounds, it kind of works. Um, uh, and, and I'll say, you know, like um, the gauge, like do, do you need me to dial it up or dial it down? Or, um, and, uh, and if you give them something to work with, because sometimes directors are trying to think of a flowery way of telling you just be louder. Like, just tell me, be louder. I'm like, I'm not gonna cry. If you're gonna go into the business, you don't go into it for fame, be a YouTuber, be a TikTok star. Go into it because you wanna be the very best that you can be, because you want to tell stories. Um, if, you want to, if you want to be an actor, you better be a pro. You better turn up. You better be prepared. You better not whinge, because you know what? The girl at the checkout who's scanning her groceries in Superquin, she can't just throw a wobbly when she's just feeling a bit rubbish. She can't go off to her trailer. She can't decide she doesn't feel like scanning her beans. Like, get on with it. I'm, I'm a, I, I get very kind of, I get very passionate about that. You know, be a pro, just because people have gotten away with it at times. Um, be a pro. Mm -hmm.